Uh, this is talk about end-to-end uh, uh, -end testing. So we will be focusing on browser testing and with Node.js. So JS knowledge is uh, pretty much important to, to proceed here. So uh, let's start uh, that uh, uh, I'll explain what playwright and concept JS means, but first about me and why, why am I here? So um, yeah, basically I'm a web developer, not a QA engineer, so my initial background is development, uh, but still I was uh, looking to improve the quality of my applications. So I started to create uh, some testing tools and one of them is concept.js and second is in misconcept, but in PHP. So pretty popular here and there. Uh, and um, at this moment, I'm uh, taking steps backwards to, to what I really love to do is being a web developer and I'm building uh, another tool for improving test, uh, test management. Uh, so improving quality assurance, it's, this tool is called Testometeo. Uh, so yeah, most of the time I do open source work or working on my own projects. That's why I look so cool on this uh, photo. Uh, so um, about end-to-end -end testing, uh, you see uh, from, it can be simple from one side, it can be hard from other side. It's simple because uh, uh, we don't need to understand the internals of the systems we are testing. Uh, we can be uh, working uh, uh, with uh, just a browser and it's absolutely, um, uh, easy to control browser comparing to understand how the system works. You just navigate through, through web interface. However, browser is still a very big and complicated system. And the first question is how do we set up browser for automated testing? Hmm. And um, that's still a big deal. So, you know, such companies like South Labs and browser stack are making lots of money just by solving this one problem, setting up browsers. Uh, the next problem is how to set up this browser for test automation. And you can uh, let first think of the tool like uh, Selenium of doing this, but maybe it's uh, 2020, maybe I don't need Selenium anymore, maybe there are some alternatives, hmm, let's figure out. And browsers are slow, so yeah, that's nothing we can really do about it, but maybe, maybe just in here, maybe some tool is faster, maybe there are some improvements. Um, maybe we can run tests in parallel on 15 Lambda functions. So this is still very not so solved problems of today. So these three problems, um, they involve more uh, infrastructure engineering, uh, setting up hardware, setting up uh, operating systems to just to write a basic test that will emulate user behavior, open website, click links, and so on. So that's like dark side of end-to-end -end testing. And another problem with end-to-end -end testing is not just the tool we use to test it, it's just the our system we do tests, it's our web applications. So um, today we see the boost of single page application, rich interfaces, everything uh, that uh, fits in a, uh, works in a browser. You can even play 3D games in the browser and everything is, uh, can, can, be, can be in your web application. Okay, so um, 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 uh, what's the problem with web applications? So uh, the first problem here is that um, the behavior, that uh, uh, the implementation of interfaces can be really flaky. Um, so this happens because the, um, uh, the nature of uh, how the browser actually works, how the interfaces are built. So you click the button, it's not clicked. Um, well, it's how to solve it. Uh, the next problem is that in old good days when there were no such many JavaScripts here and there, the, the, the application state was pretty easy to detect. You had a page, you had a form, you submit form, you are on the next step. But nowadays when everything is uh, um, 
with a, a JAX uh, React and all this stuff, you don't even know uh, on which page you are now. Did the page changed or not? So uh, how we do detect that our action succeeded? There, in, there are no guidelines uh, today to uh, detect on which application state we are at. And the like eternal problem of test automation in a web is what locators to use. Even though um, I think we solve this problem most of the time, uh, introducing uh, special locators for testing. But anyway, uh, if you use some tools that minify your uh, JavaScript code, um, you can have really big problems of testing websites that wasn't really designed to be tested. So um, this like big two problems I see that Maybe there are more problems, but uh, that's the problem I always face is the hard, uh, how, to, how to set up the browsers and the application itself to, to be tested. Uh, so um, not uh, at, at least the first problem uh, can be solved nowadays with Playwright. Uh, not completely. Playwright is just another tool and it's another real browser, but it's real Selenium alternative. So uh, by Selenium alternative, I mean that it can control uh, browsers of different uh, kinds, you, like you see Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox. Uh, it's uh, unlike Selenium, it's not built in Java and you don't need Java for it. And uh, it doesn't require a server, so it just installs and it works. So you need to play much less uh, to make it work. And um, it was created by uh, giants like Microsoft. Microsoft, as we may assume, pays money to creators of Puppeteer, uh, who uh, as a team work on Playwright today. So this is why Playwright and Puppeteer, they stand pretty much together uh, as a technology because uh, they are very similar in, in their API, but quite different in how they work. So uh, what is really cool about Playwright, if your company uh, wants to support only the modern browser engines, not ES6, not some Edge, but only uh, the last Internet Explorer, Safari, and Firefox, Playwright is just enough. What about mobile browsers? Well, Playwright do not support mobile browsers na natively, but it can emulate them because on mobile you have the same Chromium, same WebKit, and you can emulate the screen size and so on. And Playwright has built in tools for browser emulation. So, well, this one tool just solves all the modern problems for, for testing in web. But, uh, you know, I've heard lots of stories. Well, we may have probably used Playwright, but maybe our client will need tests in Internet Explorer uh, 6 or Edge. So we will stay with Selenium. Please don't stay with Selenium. Move one step forward and live in modern era. No one really needs tests in Edge or Internet Explorer. Just drop it. Or tell your client uh, that you, you are working on it, but never releases. So yeah, we have three kind of um, uh, engines right now. So uh, the Chromium is the main one because it powers all the uh, browsers we know, like Chrome, Opera, Vivaldi, um, this Internet Explorer, that's all Chromium. Uh, Firefox uh, is uh, the engine for the same browser, Firefox. And we WebKit, it's a name of engine. Uh, uh, that powers the Safari browser. So yeah, you can play around with all the modern browsers. That's really cool. And you can even turn the uh, browser to run headlessly or in a window mode with ease. That's that's awesome. So um, the limitation of Playwright is that it now works the best now only on Node.js. Somehow it works on Python, but um, I'm using Node.js, so I'm really happy with, with Playwright. So uh, let's overview of uh, what Playwright uh, proposes to us. So by the way, it's a very modern tool. It was released, uh, I think, in December or January, uh, like this year. So, um, uh, but uh, how it works? Think of it as API control of DevTools. So yeah, you, you see, you know, this uh, panel, it calls DevTools. 
We have elements here, console, sources, network, performance, memory, application. And now think that we have access to all of this information, all of these controls through our tests. We can control network, we can access elements and so on and so on. And this is exactly what Playwright Play does. It uh, gives us all the control from the dev tools to our scripts and we can use it for everything, not just test automation, but just for everything, create everything. And uh, what, uh, this was uh, the same for Puppeteer, but Playwright took this to a new um, um, uh, stage because it implemented the same behavior for Firefox and Safari WebKit. So this works the same way for all these engines, and this is awesome. So um, uh, unlike Selenium, Playwright works in bidirectional way. So in Selenium, you send command, you receive feedback. But if something happens in a browser, it won't notify you that something has changed. You need to ask browser questions and wait for answers. Playwright works differently. It has bidirectional communication. So uh, when a browser wants to send you a message, you can receive this message, something like, hey, something is in con console log was printed, or some network request was completed, and so on. So Playwright uh, allows to send you information from browser to your script directly, and you can listen for these events. That's awesome. Um, it works in, uh, from in, in browsers. Um, to make all this magic work, the developers do uh, some patches into Firefox and Safari browsers. Uh, for Chromium, it works natively, but uh, still. So um, the developers of Playwright do support these patches. And uh, so uh, the problem here is that you are um, executing tests not in system browser, not in the same browsers that your users will do, but these patches are so low levels that uh, the difference between browsers is not um, uh, re really important here. Uh, from the uh, lastest version of Playwright, you can record video. It's very cool. Uh, you can uh, control the network, um, like mock requests, just as I explained when I showed the dev tools. And device emulation, you can say, say like, uh, I show me this website in iPhone. But yes, it's, this is uh, also a feature of DevTools. You, we can change the screen size, emulate the behavior of a browser, uh, of mobile browser. And yes, yeah, there are much, much more features that you should be, uh, should be aware about. But um, I don't know which features you are interested in, so I listed just all of um, them that I will, I thought are most important. So um, here, how we write scripts in Playwright. Uh, pretty straightforward. I really like the API that it's very, um, very verbose, uh, very intuitive. You don't need to think of what here and there means. Uh, it's yeah, pretty nice and um, API is, very close to per perfect, I would say. You may say I'm biased, but um, I would say API is like in Selenium, but much more powerful. Uh, let's uh, look into uh, what objects do we have here. So uh, just uh, one step back to see what is happening here. We are opening a browser. Uh, we are opening a browser context. I will explain what it is. Then we open a tab. And then we do some actions on the tab and closing the browser. So uh, what uh, entities did we see here? We here had a browser. So this is uh, uh, the most uh, important control. It controls the, all the browser auto automation. Uh, but when we launch browser, we not just launching uh, one browser. We can launch, we need to launch a context. Because let's assume that we uh, um, have two browsers opened, uh, both in incognito mode, and we need to control all of them. So browser object does control both of the browser engines, while context represents only one window of a browser. So let's think of it like incognito browser window, you, and you want to open it with a context. 
inside of context, you want to open a tab, which uh, represents it, is represented by a page object. And uh, there is an element on page, uh, there are frames on the page, and so on. So you see the API is very verbose. And yeah, to learn it, oh, it's can be quite um, taking time. But uh, uh, API is very, very powerful. So let's uh, go to some limitations. Uh, Playwright is a tool for browser automation. Even developers of Playwright say that uh, they focused this time to bring more, uh, to be more developer friendly, to bring more joy to uh, test automation engineers. It's still not a testing framework. It's still browser automation tool. So you can't compare Playwright to Cypress because like Cypress is Built, uh, it, ha it have everything built in, but Playwright have only API to control browsers. So you need to pair it with Mocha or Jest or something else to, to set it up. It doesn't have built in assertions. Even the website says that, hey, you, hey, you can use uh, assertions, but technically you also need to install some other Playwright assertion plugin to, to use it in end-to-end -end testing. Uh, there is no some very important stuff for now, uh, like auto retries. Um, I think is, this feature is essential for website testing because, as I said, websites are flaky and we don't know state of websites. So we need to retry a few times to be sure that uh, the test has failed. Uh, there are no implicit weights uh, for the same reason. And uh, uh, why did I mention it here? It's not because I'm fan of implicit weights in Selenium, but because Play Playwright works much faster than uh, Selenium. So um, when the Selenium web driver, because of its slowness, will render and work uh, on website correctly, Playwright may fail because it just uh, executed its scripts too fast. It didn't wait for a result, and there is no real mechanism to do this. And uh, what's another, uh, from another side, the problem with Playwright is that it's pretty hard for newbies to start using it because it has low level Node.js API. So you need, you need to put everywhere this await keyword because uh, other, otherwise the, the comments won't be synchronized and you will get some mess. So you need to control every every step of a browser writing a test. Uh, you need to control this browser callbacks. Uh, so when the browser wants to send you information, you need to receive it somehow. Um, and yeah, that's probably it. Um, on, only complexity of Playwright I would mention as a problem. And um, uh, these problems are solved by ConceptJS testing framework. Uh, which is uh, a testing framework that designed solely for end-to-end -end testing and is uh, really worth great with Playwright. So you don't need to install Jest or Mocha. You, you can install ConceptJS and it will set you everything up to work with Playwright. So a few words about ConceptJS. Uh, this is uh, concept is uh, BDD style testing framework. So instead of writing low level comments to uh, what browser should do, you write user stories. What you uh, what you act uh, on page, uh, what you expect to see. Uh, but you write this not in Yorkin, but in JavaScript language. So every command is will be transformed to a browser command by the framework. Um, this framework, unlike Mocha or Jest, is focused only on browser testing. So everything there is designed to be uh, nicely playing with, with browsers and uh, everything that QA engineers need. Uh, most of these problems are already solved in ConceptJS internals. Uh, what is really powerful is that uh, ConceptJS support not only Playwright, but WebDriver, Puppeteer, Protractor. Uh, so uh, there are pretty much cases in ConceptJS that people who were writing tests in WebDriver uh, could switch to uh, Puppeteer or Playwright just with one configuration change. So uh, this is a very cool uh, feature because 
yeah, probably tomorrow there will be no new browser engine, even more cooler than, than Playwright, and you want to try it. And with Kotzeb.js, it's possible to try it without any change of your code. And yeah, that's because we use the same API and we ensure that the behavior is similar uh, in different uh, tools. So Playwright, WebDriver, Protractor, Puppeteer, and Pescafe, all these engines are currently supported. Uh, and so if you accidentally, your client still insists that you need to support Edge and you need to write your browser tests using WebDriver, well, it's pity, but you can easily switch to it without changing your tests. So um, here's the code of how Concept.js tests look like. So you see, it doesn't really look like code. It really looks like a BDD story because yeah, we just explained what we are doing here. But if we take a look on this comment, hmm, we see that probably it is uh, the real code because we put explicit weights here. And here we put explicit CSS locators. So Concept.js like, tries to pick a balance between readability and uh, um, power of the code so you can do whatever you like in the code, but still keep it readable. So uh, let's uh, install concept.js. I'm not, to, I'm not going to do it as live demo. I already did it uh, in the morning, so I recorded this nice GIF. Uh, so concept.js can be installed with this one command, and it will install uh, everything you may need. It's concept.js itself, it's Playwright, and some few extra tools that will simplify your life. Like examples, you can write, execute some example tests to play around and not to start your own project. So just this one command and the concept JS with all the things landed on your computer. So yeah, I hope you will try to execute it. Uh, once we um, installed concept JS, we need to initialize a new project. There is a setup wizard uh, you can like click enter to everything and that will be absolutely fine until the uh, setup wizard like here asks you for a test name. So provide a test name and the file will be created. Uh, that's how we get the first test. So you see just few steps, create and initialize a new project and that's all. Uh, so uh, this is the questions you, you will be asked, but yeah, you can just answer enter and this, okay. So let's start with the first test. Uh, I'm picking the airbnb.com sites for this demo because uh, from my previous experience, Airbnb was very hard to test previously. It has minified uh, uh, markup, minified JavaScript uh, and CSS. So there were no good locators on it. But today, I discovered that Airbnb works pretty good. So we will be testing this website. Uh, but um, basically, when I don't know what to do, uh, where to start, I'm using this pause command. So I'm opening my browser and pausing execution and continuing uh, and playing around the interface to find out how can I uh, use it from my script. So. Uh, here I'm executing the same code I showed to you, and it really opens me a browser. This is the Airbnb website. It's really great. It's still working COVID times. Uh, now I'm looking into the uh, locator for locator for the first input element. Uh, please look into the very bottom of my screen uh, where I type in the terminal the locator I just found. So to fill in location, I need to use the element big query detached query. That's uh, I found in DevTools. And yeah, I'm searching for apartments in Vilnius. Uh, so uh, uh, you see, I'm not opening another instance of browser to check my uh, locators. I'm testing uh, locators in the same browser, I am executing my test. That's really cool. Uh, you, after I picked the Vilnius, I can do to the next step. I am picking up the uh, time. So I can do it from the terminal as well. So the pause command 
allows me to try my commands in terminal and uh, check uh, which commands really work. So now I'm trying to pick the uh, date in the calendar. So I think, uh, so uh, yeah, I picked the day uh, today and I'm picking the, for the next day uh, tomorrow. So I press enter key to open the checkout uh, tab. And now I'm filling in uh, the another date of staying. Hey, that's, that was really cool. So we didn't use some tricky locators like this uh, so pre-selected with class names. We used the uh, this test IDs and enter key to navigate the interface. And the next uh, would be to find actually, uh, sorry, this GIF needs to be restarted. Uh, oh, oh, here it is. So uh, next will be to search for the apartment. So I click the search button and I see uh, that uh, the apartments were found. Now I do some assertions. I type in, I see the name of apartment. I see cozy apartment. Okay, I, uh, I wrote this name incorrectly. So I see that this command was incorrect. Okay, I, I changed it and the command succeeded. So I'm just, at this moment, I'm playing around the interface, but in the end, I will get a fully working test. Okay, so I checked few apartments and that's, that's okay for now. Uh, what I uh, need to do next is to go to output and take uh, all the successful comments I used previously, like this, and I'm just copying them and inserting into my test, replacing the pause. So we don't need pause anymore. Oh, I think I forgot something. I need, I need to search for Vilnius first, right? So I'm copying this comment as well. And after I search for Vilnius, I need to uh, enter, uh, press enter key. So you see all the comments have documentation and auto completion details. So you can uh, easily find the right comment to, to use. So here is a complete test we, we got in concept.js. So the code will be published and uh, we can go and the our test. You see, because of this, uh, sometimes the test is failing because not always these apartments have, uh, are on the first results. And I would also improve our test by changing the day because um, yeah, it won't work in nearest future. Uh, so I will pick up some JavaScript libraries to transform time. Uh, but still, it's absolutely valid test you can work with. Uh, what is also cool is that uh, you can uh, see this test execution in UI. So using concept, um, uh, our uh, graphical test runner, I can probably launch one. Uh, if it's, uh, uh, sorry, where is my, I will launch it from this terminal. Um, yeah, run concept. Shares UI. Uh, so here is this application. You see we have one test here. I will execute this test to see it, that it really works. And you see it's step-by-step -step execution as well, like you see it in Cypress, but uh, this is uh, cooler because it's uh, uh, we have two different browsers here. One, um, this is application itself, and this is the browser we control. So here is the main difference from Cypress IO that uh, the test execution does not affect our uh, test runner. So we are not in the same context, but that's cool because we can do things that Cypress do not support, like open subdomains or so on and so on. So even if, if it looks like Cypress, it, it is actually not. We can even have this and this uh, on the screen paired together. So we can easily, uh, sorry, easily uh, switch from one mode to another, or we can even try to execute new tests from this, uh, um, from this screen, like opening 
a new website, checks the comments from, from this interface, uh, like click. So you see it works like interactive pause I just showed, but but, but it it works in UI. So we has, uh, we have this uh, terminal and UI mode working side by side. So UI mode is optional, uh, but it's really nice, and I think that's the future of Concept JS. We will work on improving. So as you see, you can also copy successful steps from it. Uh, you can read documentation. So this is. Uh, yeah, very, very cool. Um, yeah, so this is about uh, this UI mode. Okay, how can I close the UI itself? Okay, I will turn it off. Um, yeah, so in UI mode, you can easily debug the tests and it supports pause. Uh, what I didn't mention is that uh, it saves your time because it doesn't relaunch browsers. Uh, it uses the same browser instance. It's it's very fast, and you can easily toggle between headless and window mode. So um, this was very brief overview of Concept UI, but let's go back to to Concept JS. So Concept JS is the framework, uh, um, and Concept UI is an addition on it. But let's go to see what Concept JS also have. So we have parallel executions, uh, and it will it is implemented uh, in workers. So just like Jest or just like Mocha, we have this parallel parallelization, and yeah, you don't need Jest or Mocha. We have our own built-in parallelization, and it's even more powerful than in both Jest of Mocha because Jest and Mocha parallelize your tests only by files, while Concept JS can execute tests in parallel by tests. So if you have two tests in one file, uh, Jest will, uh, Jest and Cypress and Mockup, I think, will execute this in one thread, while Concept JS will execute this in two threads. So this is really cool. Uh, Concept JS uh, also by default read automatically retries all failed steps you had. So this is very configurable. Uh, I can say that it will auto retry for four seconds like Cypress does. We have some uh, another heuristic for do this. Um, but you see, we give you more control over it. You can disable auto retries and add manual retries to the steps you uh, assume to be flagging. But auto retries for the simplicity is enabled by default. We have page objects. Page objects is first class citizen in ConceptJS. You can create page objects. You can place everything in page objects. And it's very cool, be a cool thing to, to have them. Um, and we have um, integration with Allure. We have integration with Report Portal. These are tools that bring you um, better visibility for your tests. And Concept UI is also a very nice reporter. So if you if you ask me. We have um, full Cucumber BDD support. So on top of this syntax, I click, I see, you can add your domain language. Like as a user of this big, uh, application, I want to achieve some results and write this in BDD manner as you do in Cucumber. So uh, you choosing between ConceptJS and Cucumber. Uh, well, you can choose ConceptJS with Cucumber, really. And, um, Getting back to the topic about the playwright, uh, you can combine the playwright API commands with this low level commands with awaits here and there, uh, with nice uh, nice looking ConceptJS commands. So most functionality is implemented in ConceptJS commands, click, fill field, and all, uh, but uh, if you need to use with some internals of Playwright API, some some tricks like this one to emulate dark mode, you can uh, uh, ask Playwright engine and uh, take the page object and do this stuff with Playwright API. So if uh, there is some limitation on ConceptJS, go to Playwright API and implement it on your own. No problem. So um, the tool uh, which is really loved by testers is that uh, we have uh, Locator Builder. This is a very uh, uh, useful uh, function that generates XPath from the command. So uh, internally, ConceptJS for majority of things uses XPath. 
And this allocate function can create the XPath for you. So for instance, I'm not always aware of uh, how to uh, pick up with XPath the edit button somewhere in the table. But with this function, uh, combining some CSS, uh, CSS and XPath things and text, I can build my own XPath and I don't even need to see how it looks. So a uh, few things about concept.js uh, uh, before finish with the presentation. Um, probably I, I can, uh, uh, if, we, you, if we have time, I can try to do more demos, but uh, that's probably will be after I finish with my slides. So let's uh, go and sum up the things. So Concept.js has a framework for end-to-end -end tests, for browser tests, and all the features, and there are lots of features, most of the features you may need for this, is already implemented and even documented, I would say. Um, but unlike most of uh, testing frameworks like Cypress, like Test Cafe, uh, Concept.js doesn't execute the test on its own. It delegates execution to Playwright, WebDriver, so it's just, it's, uh, uh, we do not uh, work on browser engines by, by our own. We uh, improve the experience of testers. So we, we are focused on, uh, on the better API, on better functionality, but not on how browser works. We, we are focused on integration with Playwright, but uh, we, are, we are not doing our patches into it. Uh, that's sometimes I'm, I'm asked questions, hey, you are selling this software, how much does it cost? It costs nothing. Even the concept UI costs nothing. Um, it's not for sell. Uh, and yeah, you can try try today and use it for your work. And even big companies use concept.js. Concept uh, so the last big brand I've heard of is IPM. They use concept.js and I'm really proud of it. Uh, so you may try to use it too. Uh, so uh, yeah, concept.js is free, you can try it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Playwright is also awesome. It's also free, even it's from Microsoft, it's free open source and it's really, really cool. You should try it for your uh, uh, tests as well. And Selenium is yesterday. Don't go to Selenium unless someone really pushes you to do this. So uh, I think I will have the questions now. And if uh, we want, I can pick up, uh, I, I can improve my uh, test code. And because here it is. So I can uh, uh, add something to this test, or if you want to me to do something around this test, I can uh, go and try to refactor it, to add new commands. So I'd like to uh, hear your feedback and then we will see uh, what I can do to with this code and, or to show you something. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's go with questions. Okay, Michael, thank you very much. That was really interesting. And we have a few questions for you. So uh, then we will see if we need more and more, more coding. Uh, so the first question is, from Kazimierz, uh, what are the three most awaited new features in the third version of, of CodeCept.js? Uh, so I think the CodeCept.js by itself was the most awaited uh, because all, most of features were implemented, I would say in April, but CodeCept.js was released only uh, this, this fall. It was the last day of September. And uh, mostly because we, we had to uh, pick all things up and to write documentation. Uh, so the most notable changes is the syntax. So if you were using concept.js previously, you didn't have these curly braces around it. And, but now all the tests are uh, changed for this new format. We did it to provide better TypeScript support. So uh, with this format, all you can read page objects here. And you will uh, get uh, auto completion because the TypeScript uh, from the TypeScript typings, you will have uh, this auto completed. And this is okay. We don't have this object here. I don't have auto completion, but uh, we will have all the auto completions for all injected objects. And 
this was the big change in Concept GS3. The next change is um, we uh, exposed the workers API uh, because there were so many uh, requests on how can I execute this uh, test in parallel in Chrome and Firefox, but this test I want only in Chrome, but this only in Firefox, uh, uh, but I wanted this in six threads, but some tests are slow, I want them. So, oh, this is absolute mess and it's absolutely impossible to configure setups like this. So we expose this uh, public uh, to public API, so you can write your own script that it will take your tests, parallelize them as you wish, uh, open the browsers as you wish, so you can write your own parallel execution scripts. So it's advanced task, but it's absolutely possible in version three. So uh, we also um, uh, had this, uh, uh, thing, uh, I think I, I need to go to conception website to continue. Uh, there are also some new plugins. Uh, the one plugin I like the most is uh, this, oh, sorry, the condi mm, conditional assertion. Uh, the command uh, is called try to. So when you are not sure if uh, which element on page exists, uh, for instance, you are running A and B testing and your application behaves differently, you add this uh, try to comment, and instead of failing the test, if this not sync, it returns you true or false, depending on the result. And you can check uh, this, like, it's, this example demonstrates as soft assertions, assertions that not failing test. Uh, but also you can use it for clicking cookies. You are not sure are you already clicked this cookies stuff or not. But so the try to is very powerful and you, you can use it for, 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 for these uh, interfaces. Um, mm -hmm, what's, uh, what else was, uh, uh, we also have a TypeScript guide, so you, you can officially uh, use official, official guide and even start the boilerplate project. So you can look on it here, start with TypeScript from the beginning, uh, presently, I don't use TypeScript very often, at least I don't use it for tests, because Concept.js already uh, brings me everything I need from uh, from testing. It also brings me auto-completion. All these things are documented. And I don't see that I need types inside my test, because most of the time tests are just very straightforward. Click here, do this, do theirs, but uh, there will there are lots of requests from people who use TypeScript for everything. So we added this official support for TypeScript. Um, best practices guide was really updated. I don't know other tools that have so many good advices and about how you should structure, should structure your tests, how you should manage your data, how you should manage your page object. Everything is there. So uh, learn it if you want to uh, start automation for a big project. And uh, yeah, Concept UI and the new installer is also now a part of our API, but, and you can probably learn from what's new in Concept GS from these guides. So pretty, pretty lots of things here. Uh, so yeah, I think that's, that's all about this uh, question. Thank you for thanks for okay session. okay thank you uh so another question we have we have two questions from vitaly so I'll, I'll i'll start with the first one uh so the first one michael is that uh, can we use the keyword i dot use playwright too only when the playwright was chosen as a helper or we can use it with a web driver helper as well <laughs> i think the answer is uh, you can guess the answer. Sure, you can't use it for web driver, so it just passes command to uh, to playwright. So uh, the the limitation of Concept JS is still there. So you can't use both engines at at once. So you it's either driven by one or by two. Technically, there is a way probably to start application from web driver, then use the commands from. But why? Why do you need this? So um, 
yeah, when you use uh, the command I use playwright, playwright2 is available only for playwright. But similar command is available for web driver, so you can expose web driver API the same way and do API calls using web driver API. But yeah, not both in the same time. Okay, thank you. So another question uh, from Vitaly. So he said that he faced uh, the issue for parallel execution using workers. So their test periodically uh, failed. And it has worked with parallel multiple. Has it changed with new workers API? Uh, new workers API, um, uh, I think uh, uh, new workers API are better from, from the design level. But uh, for some cases, they may not be as stable as the classical parallelization using processes. So um, it's very advanced and very sophisticated topic. And depending on the kind of project, uh, uh, it's really hard to figure out what, what way is the best to, to do it. So for me, workers are better, but maybe they are not, not uh, as good for, for, the, uh, for some environments. So, that's why we still have both parallelization mode, but run multiple is not really supported because it's it's very complicated in, in implementation. Uh, so uh, I think it's very early days for Concept GS3. So we will probably uh, fix, I, uh, we need some time for people to report issues. Uh, we need some time for people for collect fixes on this workers issue and I think uh, day by day, we will improve the workers' support. Thank you, Michael. Uh, another question from Farazi. Is it possible to generate test coverage in CodeCept.js? Uh, test coverage, uh, we have, uh, it's a very general term. If you mean code coverage, um, uh, we have a plugin for for Puppeteer to collect code coverage. I think uh, this similar approach uh, can be done using the uh, play uh, for playwright. So it's not implemented yet for, um, but uh, to my experience, most of time uh, ConceptJS is used for end-to-end -end testing. And when you do end-to-end -end testing, you don't deal with the code directly. You deal with the full user journeys, which involves all parts of your application, not just front end, front end, back end, APIs, everything. So, code coverage are not very frequently requested feature. So, definitely, code coverage can be improved, um, but uh, not still uh, here. So, but it works with Puppeteer. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, just just a comment from Arminas. Uh, so mm -hmm. he said that if you compare a tool with Selenium in, in 2020, in your slides, it means that Selenium still rocks. So <laughs> version four yeah. of Selenium will have the most of the features you've talked about. So uh, I think they are releasing the Selenium four for five years now. <laughs> uh, you say that um, there is uh, I think it's very nice that we have this competition. So we have slow and stable and corporate Selenium, which uh, which works for everyone, which is stable, and modern cool hipster in the house, like Playwright, Puppeteer, this new tool from the uh, very cool guys from the big brands that develop their own uh, tools. And uh, let's, uh, you can choose your style, like, be solid, stable, but low featured, or take the most of new fresh features, but with some assumptions on instability. Uh, so there's still few things why Selenium won't rock like Playwright. First of all, because uh, Selenium is a, uh, is a consortium of different uh, groups, so they have web, uh, they have this web, web driver community, so to implement some feature in Selenium, they need uh, to do it through browser vendors to ask them uh, to talk, talk a lot. So implementing features are much more slower process in Selenium community. In Playwright, it's much faster because they develop all the stuff. 
And uh, yeah, because of technology and legacy support, Selenium will still lack lots of features that Playwright has. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not uh, saying that you should uh, give it away with Selenium WebDriver. Maybe I'm trying to push Playwright because it's, it's the future, but still ConceptJS supports all of these engines. So you don't need to rewrite all your projects for, for Playwright, but on uh, new projects, I would recommend to start with Playwright. Okay, thank you, Michael. Another question for you. Uh, so Playwright itself offers images and video capture. Uh, is it possible to do a visual testing? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so um, visual testing. Uh, visual testing, to be honest, is not absolutely a problem for any browser tool. It's just taking screenshots, comparing screenshots. Uh, in ConceptJS, we have uh, visual testing guide uh, somewhere here. So we have a few tools about visual testing. Uh, one of them is our open source solution is Resemble Helper. So it takes screenshots, it compares to take the visual difference. Uh, so we have one open source solution of our own. Uh, very naive, very simple, but yeah, it, it works. It's open source. Uh, we have support for Apply tools, uh, and we have um, upcoming support for visual uh, a visual tracker, I would say this tool is called, called. I just need to put it into the documentation. Um, but uh, yeah, there are pretty much options for visual testing. Um, yeah, I, I will remember the name of the tool and may, maybe I will add to this uh, somehow um, because, or I will just add it to this documentation yeah, because the number of the tools can be used for visual testing will, will be increasing. Okay, and thanks I a lot. Really, yeah, and I really want to bring this visual testing uh, uh, support to concept UI so you could uh, execute tests and visually tests and see screenshots in this UI mode. Okay, great. Uh, another question for you. Uh, sorry, I just uh, forgot to mention that the previous question was was uh, asked by Neringa. So next question, uh, Yeva asks, uh, when would you suggest using headless browsers? Uh, when you already wrote a lot of tests and you want to execute on all of them while drinking coffee. So just execute them headlessly and wait for them to, to pass. So for instance, I can do this presentation and execute my test. Uh, and I don't really, so no browser window is appearing on this, uh, on my screen. I can browse, browse as it's not distracting. It's abs so it's uh, uh, it's absolutely useful to work. So when you need to execute some tests, you see now this test passed because the cozy apartment. Well, sorry, I will try to enlarge. The cozy apartment was not on the page, and by the way, I can, if the test fails and it fails in careless mode, I can take the screenshot and check this uh, the, the page screenshot. Uh, here. Um, and uh, so uh, the problem with headless mode is just to figure out uh, and debug them. But for debugging, you need to re execute the tests in window mode and check what was wrong. OK, uh, thank you. Uh, another question from Ivaras What should be tested on end to end level and what not? Oh, good question. Uh, so um, really depends on what is the coverage for your application. Uh, um, if it's absolutely empty coverage, no tests, and I, I, I had lots of such ca cases for legacy application, for big bank application where is, uh, the code is very closed and so on. Um, so uh, for this case, end-to-end uh, -end testing is essential because it uh, all the user specifications uh, must be implemented with end-to-end -end tests. Um, but 
let's assume the different situation when you already have unit tests, integration tests, and you think, hey, do I need end-to-end -end tests now? Uh, so uh, if you have everything else tested and then this, you need to go through user journey. Uh, so think of uh, the business values of your product, like uh, for um, e-commerce side, it would be a checkout process. The user should be able to go to the page, pick a product, go fill in the details, uh, go through the checkout, uh, uh, make shipment and make payment, go to the payment website, fill in credit card details. You see payment website is not of our business, uh, not of not our code, but it's of our business, you see. Um, so it's very important to automate this complete user journeys using end-to-end -end tests. So if everything also works correctly, think of complete user journeys, which can be done as end-to-end -end tests, by the way, um, this is not possible for in Cypress IO because Cypress is very flaky to the uh, websites which are not under your control. So it can't do this user journeys. It uh, works much better for um, specific components. But Concept.js can work for anything that browser can, can do. So Concept.js is the best for such uh, use cases. Thank you, Michael, for the answer. Uh, another question, it's uh, actually two questions combined in one, so I'll try to paraphrase or we'll just read out loud. So uh, in, in the beginning of your presentation, you said that the Puppeteer is a new web driver. Now you're speaking about a playwright. So do you, see, do you think that the playwright will kind of kill the web driver Selenium? So, and do you agree that Selenium is still a leader on automated UI testing? Uh, it's a question from Maxim uh, and uh, Gitman. Mm -hmm. Sounds a very good question. I think it's very, very nice competition. Uh, uh, we don't need to make stakes on, on each of them. Yeah, we are not casino here. So who is the winner? Who is the... I don't really care. I, I choose the technology by uh, how it how it works. So I really like Playwright because it's simple. It's easy to install. So uh, I added the Playwright as default engine for uh, Concept.js. So if you open the website here, Click quick start and it will tell it that it will install a playwright for you because it installs very easily. I can say the same for web driver. To install web driver, you need to, to ensure that there is Java, that there are also browser Chrome driver, and so on. And sometimes this doesn't work. Maybe we'll try with Docker, but it also doesn't work. What should we do? Playwright just works and it easily um, uh, to start with it. It's faster than web driver and it have better API and user experience. That's why I prefer it. But uh, again, if you feel more comfortable with web driver, if you have a uh, web driver working for you, it's absolutely fine. So if Cypress IO is cool for you, use it. So all these tools exist to uh, fill some needs. And I, I'm not thinking that someone will uh, lose, someone will win. And because of different concepts between Playwright, Puppeteer, and uh, WebDriver, they will still exist. For instance, uh, even Playwright exists, Puppeteer still is seen because Puppeteer uh, is used in Google Cloud as uh, uh, in Lambda functions. So to, to make screenshots, to print websites as PDFs, so you, you know the amount of the data that Google Cloud Engine serves a day, and uh, uh, all those Lambda functions in have Puppeteer installed. So Puppeteer won't uh, be deleted, even they they will stop supporting it. And the same for Playwright. I think Microsoft is have very strategic thinking of of what Playwright can be and what we see nowadays. It's just the first early steps of it. So. Uh, probably they will invest more time in marketing, in uh, spreading of this tool, and more support from their uh, new uh, new edge uh, browser. And that's a pretty interesting competition. And I'd like to develop the tools that ha have all these players playing around in a team and not to fight with each other. Yeah, that's a good analogy for concept JS. Thank you, Michael. Uh, 
seems like you you are the most popular guy with with lots of questions and we have uh vitali who is uh, also the most uh questions asked guy here so uh yeah. his uh, third question I know. <laughs> Uh, so, is it possible to handle the issue with live stream video in Playwright? It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't work in Chromium, but works in Chrome. Can we use Playwright Helper to change browser to Chrome instead of Chromium? Ah, that's that's an interesting question. Um, um, hmm. uh, I think uh, technically uh, it is possible to solve it. Um, so the Playwright team doesn't recommend to do this. But they say that, well, you can technically change uh, through its uh, configuration the browser it executes. So you can bypass the path to your, uh, you can add the path to your Google Chrome driver somewhere in the config, and it will execute Google Chrome in, instead of Chromium. Will it work? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's the case that uh, because this is, um, Probably because license restrictions, the Playwright team doesn't work with Google Chrome. Maybe because they are Microsoft, not Google anymore, uh, this team. So they can't use the Google Chrome on their own. They use only open source tools. So if this is a sync, maybe Puppeteer can be better for you because yeah, Puppeteer is Google product and you need Google Chrome. So that's very interesting edge case, and I'm not sure what will work for this. Okay, Michael, thank you very much. It was the last question for you. So uh, I think that we uh, it's we just fitted in, in the time because you had yeah. lots of questions. So it, it was really nice yeah. and impressive presentation. Um, okay, so, so yeah. Also, please check my new project, Testomatio. It's a very powerful test management, test case management system, which combines manual testing, automated testing, and work great with Concept.js and all the JavaScript testing tools we have on market.